Love him or hate him, you certainly can't ignore José Mourinho, whether it's for his success on the field or his larger-than-life personality of it. There's no doubt about it, the Portuguese coach loves the drama and theatre of it all. Coming up, a masterclass from the most successful manager of his generation. I try to be, to be a friend, but at the same time, uh, they know that job is job. We grill him on some of the most burning questions. A lot of people want to know why Cristiano Ronaldo was unhappy. So is it the special one or is it the only one? My ego was leaving <laughs> a special moment. And discover that life away from the Real Madrid dugout is far from rosy. If I could switch off a light and become a person that nobody knows, I would do it. Hello, welcome to Madrid and the Santiago Bernabeu, home to the one and only José Mourinho, a man whose name has become synonymous with winning. He's won it all and he's done it in style. José Mourinho has had the Midas touch throughout a glittering career. His trophy tour started in Portugal with FC Porto, where he won the 2004 UEFA Champions League. Next stop, London. He led Chelsea to their first league title in half a century. Mourinho then took over at Inter Milan, with whom he won the 2010 Champions League. And now he's at Real Madrid. So far, he's picked up three trophies in two seasons. All in all, José has won 20 titles in 10 years across four countries. And he made a big impact everywhere he went. For me, the best tactics, everything around the players, the motivation. Jose, uno que... Jose has one special quality, and that is his loyalty to his players. It's impossible to talk about Mourinho the coach without talking about Mourinho the man. He's bold, brash, and certainly believes in himself. I think I'm a special one. I want more and more and more. His style has made him an idol for some. Fantastic. I think he's um, actually quality, and I, don't, I think he always will be but an enemy for others. Critics have called him arrogant and many believe at times he has crossed the line. I think that Real Madrid had never worse image than the half right now. That's not only because of Mourinho, but he's the main guilty alongside with Cristiano Ronaldo. Of course he has gone over the top on occasions and I think, I think he would recognise that. For example, things like poking Tito Villan over in the eye. At the start of this season, he admitted that he'd been wrong. Considering his profile and the fact he is a fellow Portuguese, I was really looking forward to sitting down with Mourinho for an exclusive interview. I started our chat by asking him what was the most important title of his career. It's difficult because um, all of them, they have, a, they have a meaning. The emotional one was um, the Champions League with Inter because uh, I, I knew before the match that was my my last match with uh, with Inter, and I have to say that I was so happy in in every club I was, and I was so connected with every club. But Inter was was special. So considering the twenty trophies in four different countries, do you think you're the best manager in the world? <laughs> I don't I don't like that. No? I don't no. I don't like I don't like the best player in the world. I don't like the best manager in the world. But if you were the president of Club A and you could go out and get any manager in the world, that would be you, no? Because the results, the <laughs> results uh, are in that direction. <laughs> and, and no, you laugh, but it's but it's, it's, it's true. You know, I I, um, I think. Um, one of my qualities is, is exactly uh, adapt very, very fast and adapt very, very well to a new club, to a new country, to a new culture. Tell me honestly, if you don't win the Champions League with Real, will you see your stay here as a failure? No, no, because I, f I, I, I always say this when I win and when I lose, I say the same. We, in relation to, to the Champions League. There is an, an edge where the difference between succeed and not succeed is, is very, very narrow. So I don't consider a failure.
But I know what you mean. The world will consider a failure because I won so many times and, and, and I, I, I brought so many success to the teams where I am that probably everybody is expecting that. So when the fans aren't happy, when the media isn't happy, when people around a particular team that you're managing isn't happy, you don't feel anything? No, I don't feel. Um, I'm the first to feel when things are not going well. I'm, I'm the first one to lead the revenge of the bad results. Uh, I'm the one that doesn't accept. So I don't need uh, the crowd to boo, uh, to feel we have to improve. I don't need to read um, the front page of a sports newspaper to say that uh, Real Madrid is a disaster or Jose Mourinho is doing a, a bad job. And um, I don't feel really, I don't feel pressure from the outside. Do you feel people have the wrong idea of you? I don't have to be the one to tell you that many times people have quite a, a negative view of you, an aggressive view of you, a tough view of you. I know. And no. I you? think is uh, I think it's quite normal because people 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 think they know me but they don't. People knows the manager, especially the manager during 90 minutes. If I could be a manager, a football manager, and the moment I leave the club or the moment the match finished, if I could uh, switch off uh, a light and become a person that nobody knows, I would do it. Because I hate my, my social life. Really? I, I hate my social life. I hate not, not, not to be a normal father that goes with his son to the son's football match and being there with the other 20 fathers watching the, the match. I am in a football match of kids of 10, 12 years old, and I have to be there. The people has to come for photos, the people has to come for autographs, the people has to come to insult me, the people has to go behind the goal of my kid and insult a kid of 12 years old. So, you know, I would love to be in the street with, with my family as a normal person and, and I can't. So, I am a completely different person in my, in my private life. The Mourinho Masterclass has only just begun. After a short break, I hang out with José in his office, where he talks to me about Cristiano Ronaldo's unhappiness and Mario Balotelli's silliness. I could write a book of 200 pages of uh, my two years in interview with, with Mario. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back to Mourinho Masterclass. If there is one place in the world of football where you're in the spotlight, then this is it, the Real Madrid hot seat. No wonder so many people want a piece of José Mourinho. Leading up to my interview with a special one, I decided to get you involved. Point of origin, London. I thought I'd give football fans around the world plenty of warning that I'm on my way to Spain to meet the special one. So what better way to get you involved than delving into the social stratosphere and sending out a message on Twitter? It didn't take long to get a response. The questions started pouring in on Twitter and also on our Facebook page. Plenty more questions were posted on my weekly blog, which focused on Mourinho's season at Real Madrid. While we engaged fans online, we also got stuck in amongst the supporters. At Stamford Bridge, one of José Mourinho's old stomping grounds, Chelsea followers had plenty of ideas on what to ask. Why didn't he resolve his differences with, with Roman so that he could stay? When are you coming back? Why'd you leave? Yeah, why'd you leave in the first place? Come back. Well, if Chelsea fans want Mourinho back, they'll have to wrestle him away from Real supporters because here in Madrid, they love El Especial. For me, there's no doubt that he's definitely the best coach in the world. He's a genius guy. He's really the special and the only one. So if you could ask José just one question, what would it be? How long are you going to be here? What happened with Cristiano? Why was he unhappy? We've been talking with a lot of fans over the last 
few days um, and asking them to send in questions for you. And a lot of people want to know why Cristiano Ronaldo was unhappy. <laughs> you know, I think was uh, was not really unhappy. Cristiano is a happy boy, uh, and um, he loves he loves the game. He loves to train. I had in my career so many players in love with with the game, and I cannot say nobody more than than Cristiano. As you know, uh, I was with Cristiano for the UEFA Champions League draw and that was when they gave the award to Iniesta and after he told me he was disappointed. How much do you think that had to do with his unhappiness, that he feels he's not being appreciated enough? I don't know really. Uh, what I know is that uh, he had an absolutely amazing season. Iniesta is a fantastic player, no doubts about it. But um, his season was not good. Um, he had a good Euro. He won the Euro, but the Euro was three weeks. So I think uh, Cristiano had a reason to be unhappy with, uh, with the decision. But it's a decision. A lot of players talk very highly of you. Frank Lampard still now says you're like a father to him. Wesley Snyder got emotional when he talked about you. What's your secret of creating a special bond with, with these players? And just being myself and just trying to, um, to be honest with them. Even to say to a player, next season I don't, I, I, I don't count on you, next season I want you to sell, next season I want you to leave. I don't send messages by, 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 by any person. It's I'm always face direct face. with them. They always need to feel that you care about them. I try to be, to be a friend, but at the same time, uh, they know that um, job is job. What was the most problematic player you ever had to deal with? You know, I think uh, the most problematic. I'm thinking of a few. The most problematic. They were funny. They were funny. Uh, can, I, can I give you a suggestion? Mario. Yeah. Yeah, Mario. Mario was 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 good fun. I could I could write I could write a book of 200 pages of uh, my two years in interview with, with Mario, but the book would be not a drama. The book would be... A comedy. A comedy. I remember one in, uh, in Kazan. We went to Kazan in the Champions League. And um, in that match, I had um, all my strikers uh, uh, injured. No Milito, uh, no Eto. I was really in trouble and Mario was the only one. Mario gets uh, a yellow card in, the, in minute 42, 43. So when I go to the dressing room at halftime, I, um, I spent, I would say, 14 minutes of the 15. I was spending 14 minutes speaking only for Mario. Mario, I cannot change you. I cannot make a change. I don't have a striker on the bench. Don't touch anybody. Play only with the ball. When we lose the ball, no reaction. If somebody provocates you, no reaction. If the referee makes a mistake, no reaction. Mario, please. Minute 46. No way. Red card. No way. <laughs> First minute in the second half, red card. <laughs> what can you do, right? Nothing. Let's have a look at the squad here just quickly because I wanted to ask you, if I had to pick, out of all these names, if I had to pick uh, the, the, the joker of the team, yeah. who, who would that be? The joker of the team? I would say Albiol. Really? Okay. Um, who's the most vain? I would say the less vain, Iguain. He dresses the first thing he he gets uh, when he wakes up, and uh, he doesn't come with pajama because he can't. If I were going to ask you to pick one guy to babysit your your children, I guess they're not babies anymore, but take care of yeah. your children for a day, who 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 would you pick? Essien. You would. Yeah. Because he's responsible, or he would show them. He's responsible. Time? He's funny. He's, he smiles all the time. And who would be the last guy you would leave your children with? The last one? Yeah. The last one? You would rather leave with a, with a stranger. The last <laughs> one, I would say, would, would be Antonio Adan, the, the second goalkeeper. The last one, because he would teach my boy 
things that my boy has to learn with, with 18, not with 12. <laughs> Well, Mourinho himself has taught others a thing or two. Watch José at his best as he talks about omelettes, wine with Fergie, and he relives the announcement that started it all. Please don't call me arrogant because what I, I'm saying is true. I'm European champion. I think I'm a special one. For me, pressure is uh, bird flu. I'm feeling a lot, I'm serious. I'm feeling a lot of pressure with the, the swan in Scotland. <laughs> but if you want a bet, how much? My salary against your salary. My salary against your salary. Yeah, right. Do you want to do it? For one day. One day salary. No, one month salary. Do you want to know my team tomorrow? So why don't you ask me? What's your team tomorrow? It's too late. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jose Mourinho enjoys putting on a show. Some of his press conference antics have now become part of football folklore. So what does Jose himself think about some of his most memorable media moments? I tried to find out. Let's start with the classic. The first press conference in England. You announce yourself to the world and this is what you have to say. Please don't call me arrogant because what I'm saying is true. I'm European champion. I think I'm a special one. Did you know then that it would have the impact it did and that would be your nickname for the next 10 years? No, no. Had you thought about that before you no, went I was, out there? I was, I was surprised because uh, that press conference was a couple of days after Champions League final. My, my ego was <laughs> leaving <laughs> a special moment and I go there and, and, and before that, three, four, five, six questions, all of them in the same direction. Are you ready to be in England? And I was feeling, what is this? Hey, I, European champion, I, I, I just won a Champions League with, with the Portuguese uh, club. They should be very happy that the European champion is, is, is coming to their football and they are putting me under pressure. Nah, no way, no way. I'm not a normal one, I'm a special one. <laughs> I'll be honest with you though, because now I'm a little confused. In an interview that you gave in Portugal, which I saw, you, you said you were, you were the only one. So if I look here, okay, <laughs> I show you the scarf. I get a little bit confused. So is it the special one or is it the only one? I think the special one is, is forever. Next up, one you'll uh, remember very clearly, I think, um, had to do with uh, culinary analogies. <laughs> eggs and omelets. market, you have eggs, class one, class two, class three and some are more expensive than others, and some give you better omelets. So when, when the class one X, you know, are in waitress and you cannot go there, you have a problem. When you, when you see this, what goes through your mind? What do you think? No, you know that this story of eggs and omelets is, is, uh, is coming in, in, in Portugal. Portugal you know? exactly. It's coming in Portugal. And um, it was a period in, in Chelsea where, the, where uh, I had lots of injuries. I had no central defenders to play. I was waiting in the market of January to get uh, a central defender. I didn't get. No, you uh, didn't. I didn't get. <laughs> you didn't get there. I didn't get. So, um, you know, was, was a positive way, a funny way to say that um, you know, at that time I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Roman Abramovich didn't give you the eggs you wanted to, to cook up your, your special, your special omelette. Would, would you work with him again? Of course. You would? Of course. No hard feelings? No, no. And uh, I think was a, a perfect example of um, a fantastic divorce. All right, take three. Another fantastic moment in a press conference in the UK. This is nothing against Sir Alex. I, I, I want to tell you one thing. After the game, after the press conference, we were together in my office. We laughed, we spoke, we speak, we drank. And to be fair, when we go to, to, to Man United, I will give him a very, I will bring a very good bottle of wine. I kept my the wine, the wine we drank was very bad. <laughs> 
It's, it's classic, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you the truth. So you don't have a, a sour taste in your mouth after this interview. I did bring you a, a, a bottle of, of wine, which I consider to be Thank all right. You. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, your, your, your relationship with, with a lot of managers wasn't the best, at least in the media. But with Sir Alex Ferguson, it was always special. So would the perfect scenario be to take over from, from Sir Alex? No. The perfect scenario is when I go there, he's still coach. Because uh, I think football will lose a lot when, when he stops. For me, he's the boss. I call him the boss because he's the boss of the coaches. And um, I hope when I, when, when I go back to English football, he still, he still manages uh, Man United. Would you take a Manchester City job knowing that that would probably stop you from taking over Manchester United one day? I don't think in, in another club. Uh, I just say openly mm -hmm. that uh, for many reasons, after this, this, uh, this tragic, uh, the next step will be England for many reasons, but when I don't, I don't know, I don't have idea, and um, I'm so happy to be in this moment the manager of the best club in the world. So right now you don't think this is when I'm leaving Real Madrid. You don't have that limit. No, I don't have that limit. Uh, I think it's the most difficult job in the world of football, and I, I enjoy it. Zen, I can say I very much enjoyed spending some time with you. It was a pleasure, My as pleasure. always. Good luck for the rest My of the pleasure. season. Thanks a lot. And your career as well. In a half a century, Mourinho then took over at Inter Milan, with whom he won the 2010 Champions League. And now he's at Real Madrid. So far, he's picked up three trophies in two seasons. All in all, Jose has won 20 titles in 10 years across four countries. And he made a big impact everywhere he went. For me, it's the best. Tactics, everything around the players, the motivation. Jose, uno que... Jose has one special quality, and that is his loyalty to his players. It's impossible to talk about Mourinho the coach without talking about Mourinho the man. He's bold, brash, and certainly believes in himself. I think I'm a special one. I want more and more and more. His style has made him an idol for some. Fantastic. I think he's um, actually quality, and I don't... I think he'll always will be. But an enemy for others. Critics have called him arrogant, and many believe at times he has crossed the line. I think that Real Madrid had never worse image than the half right now. That's not only uh, because of Mourinho, but he's the main guilty alongside with Cristiano Ronaldo. Of course he has gone over the top on occasions and I think I think he would recognise that, for example, things like poking Tito Villan over in the eye. At the start of this season, he admitted that he'd been wrong. Considering his profile and the fact he is a fellow Portuguese, I was really looking forward to sitting down with Mourinho for an exclusive interview. I started our chat by asking him what was the most important title of his career. It's difficult because um, all of them, they have, a, they have a meaning. The emotional one was um, the Champions League with Inter because uh, I, I knew before the match that was my, my last match with, uh, with Inter. And I have to say that I was so happy in, in every club I was and I was so connected with every club. But Winter was, was special. So considering the 20 trophies in four different... Love him or hate him, you certainly can't ignore Jose Mourinho, whether it's for his success on the field or his larger-than-life personality of it. There's no doubt about it. The Portuguese coach loves the drama and theatre of it all. Coming up, a masterclass from the most successful manager of his generation. I try to be, to be a friend, but at the same time, uh, they know that job is job. We grill him on some of the most burning questions. A lot of people want to know why Cristiano Ronaldo was unhappy. So is it the special one or is it the only one? My ego was leaving <laughs> a special moment. And discover that life away from the Real Madrid dugout is far from rosy. If I could switch off a light and become a person that nobody knows, I would do it. Hello, welcome to Madrid and the Santiago Bernabeu, home to the one and only Jose Mourinho, a man whose name has become synonymous with winning. 
He's won it all and he's done it in style. Jose Mourinho has had the Midas touch throughout a glittering career. His trophy tour started in Portugal with FC Porto, where he won the 2004 UEFA Champions League. Next stop, London. He led Chelsea to their first league title.